Well guys, it's not going to be an easy process. When that truck came up and slammed into the hotel, it knocked out three support walls. Now it is very steep where the firefighters are, so to help out in the efforts you have this along with 11 other support aircraft going to the staging area, picking up supplies such as water, retardant materials and other things, bringing it to those on the ground. Now these boards are all that's left of a mobile home that burned down late last year. Now because these homes burn up so quickly, it's the hopes of this new volunteer fire department that a quicker response time will help prevent fires like this in the future. Now here's the corner of Bosque and North 26th Street and it's pretty easy to see why Miss Harrison wouldn't want to let her grandchildren play outside. Now on the ground you have this piece of glass left over from an accident just this last weekend involving small children. Up here you have a bent pole coming from a car that just completely comes up and over onto this grass area. And over here you see flowers left for a woman who died only two months ago when a garbage truck hit her house. Now the connection between all these Miss Harrison says is that each one of them comes from a driver who looked up and saw red. Now News Channel 25's Kevin Davis is in Temple right now where that truck is still embedded in that hotel. Now, he also talked with the man staying in that destroyed hotel room who narrowly escaped being seriously hurt or killed. And Kevin, are they going to be able to pull that truck out of that building? Well guys, it's not going to be an easy process. When that truck came up and slammed into the hotel, it knocked out three support walls. Now Temple Police say because the damage is, is so extensive, they might have to rebuild this entire wing of the hotel. But of course, none of this is on the mind of Wayne Woodard, who came so close to death today. Woodard and his son were in town for his son's wedding. Little did they know it would be their room that ended up the prime target for a runaway big rig hurtling a hundred feet through the air. Uh, my son had gotten up to, uh, to go do some exercise and uh, he had already come back to the room and told me he was going to get breakfast. So I got up and took a shower and right where the truck went through, by the way, is where the shower is. But Woodard decided to join his son and that's when it happened. We were eating breakfast uh, and I heard this loud explosion is what I thought it was. The building rock. As the dust settled and they headed back towards their room, Woodard and his son saw what could have been their final resting place. The first thing that both my son and I thought was how lucky we were we weren't in the room. And it was one of those immediate life-death stories. And though their possessions are still missing, Woodard is just glad he didn't pick today to sleep in. A tragedy in a lot of ways, but thank goodness not a tragedy for our health and our lives. Now Woodard says the wedding is still on, but the honeymoon will have to wait until they find their passport somewhere in what used to be their hotel room. Live in Temple, Kevin Davis, News Channel 20. It's been almost two years since the hurricane struck and it seems like no progress has been made. Very little, but not enough. Will the golf course be overlooked or will you guys send help? Thanks. Two years, $114 billion, 1 million volunteers, and 14 million man-hours spent rebuilding Katrina-afflicted areas. But for those of us in Santa Barbara, we only hear about the Gulf Coast and its residents on anniversaries of one of the nation's most devastating natural disasters. So where are they now and what is life like on the Gulf Coast two years later? Life in the French Quarter is pretty much back to normal. Street musicians entertain those passing by, some hoping for a buck and some hoping to draw a smile. Bourbon Street still draws massive crowds with this diverse nightlife. The Superdome, which had its roof partially ripped off during the storm, has been restored to its former glory. But drive a few minutes past the main street and one sees a very different story. Nearly a third of the population of New Orleans has yet to return. And in one of the most devastated areas, emptiness and decay can best describe what has become a literal ghost town. Here in the Ninth Ward, you can see abandoned houses like the one behind me pretty much everywhere. You can also see the markings left by rescue workers as they came to clear out the house, even though it's been two years since the storm hit. On the top, you have the date it was cleared, September 17th. On the left, the name of the group that cleared it out, in this case, a group from California. And on the bottom, you have the amount of bodies that were found. Now this says zero, but we've seen as many as eight bodies in one house, and that's just down the street. These people also left a message blaming the government for a lack of funding, which is probably why they had to take off. And if you look inside, you can see that what used to be somebody's home has been completely destroyed. 
But the slow recovery isn't limited to the Ninth Ward alone. In another part of New Orleans, Lisa Palumbo's rebuilding effort has stalled while she fights just to collect her insurance. It took us 17 months just to settle with the insurance company over the foundation issue. For Lisa, recovery is anything but easy. Her insurance company claimed that because her house was also damaged by water, they didn't have to pay. Insurance companies like to attribute a lot of things that have to do with foundation damage to flood because uh, flood takes it off of them. And unfortunately, national flood insurance uh, does not cover damage to a foundation. But the contractor Lisa hired had a different opinion. He came and looked at the house and he looked at the structural damage and he said this was absolutely caused by wind. You can see in the picture that I lined everything up and made grid lines at 90 degrees and you can see that the horizontal lines line up with my fence which is level in the front. And if you look at the, you can see how the house is definitely tilted from a vertical line. In the meantime, Lisa comes every day to her broken home picking one thing to fix until she has the money to start over. Like many in New Orleans, her story of recovery is one of frustration and patience tested. But New Orleans isn't the whole story. An hour's drive east is Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, which was ground zero for Katrina's wrath. While the hurricane broke the levees and flooded New Orleans, in Bay St. Louis, the 135 mile an hour winds completely wiped homes off the map. Even two years later, a neighborhood that once had majestic homes is now scattered with rubble and FEMA trailers. For Kathleen Koch of CNN, who was raised in Bain St. Louis and lost the home she grew up in, the tragedy hits close to home. You're there and you know you've got to do your job, and that is the best way at the time that you can help people. But at the same time, you just you want to rip off that microphone and you want to commandeer your SUV where you've got a little bit of food and water for you and your crew and your producer, and you just want to start driving up and down the streets. In this town ravaged by Katrina, Kathleen's story of personal loss is just one of many. I'll never complain about making a bed again, because you can't even get around that. you got to crawl on it to make the bed, and my wife insists we make the bed every day. If it wasn't for my wife, it wouldn't. Where a beautiful house once stood, two FEMA trailers occupy Joe D's land. Like many others in his neighborhood, a sign sits out front that lets people know his true feelings about his insurance company. Everybody, it started to be like, instead of Christmas card alley at Christmas time, it started to be State Farm sign alley. Joe has been waiting two years for State Farm to pay him. Like Lisa from New Orleans, his insurance company denied his claim because water was also involved. He hopes he can rebuild his home soon. All we want is what we paid for so we can build our house back and get on with our lives.